Shana Tova, Shalom Chavim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, and we have come to the beginning of yet what is called by most of uh, Israel and Judaism a new year, Rosh Hashanah, as it is termed, and the blowing of the trumpets. We are actually now at the beginning, of course, is by Israeli time, at the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, we have Rosh Hashanah, we have uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, so many different feasts that are celebrated, of course, culminated by Yom Kippur here during this time. It is the fall harvest is what is happening right now. But the question is, is how did we ever come to the name uh, or this being Rosh Hashanah? Because in reality, it's really not the first of the new year. Because according to the book uh, of Exodus, chapter 12, we read in the verse 1 and 2 here, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to their father's house, a lamb for a household. So it is the beginning of the months. It is... Nisan 1 there at the time of Passover. This is really what our new year is. So we have to ask the question is how did we ever come to the idea that uh, at the fall feast is where we have a new year? How did Israel start this? Well, it's kind of a complicated situation. Uh, if you just want to read an article about it, that's fairly simple. This one right here showing Israel in their early days there. Uh, it's called MyJewishLearning.com. You can read the article there. I'll post it in the links below there for you. How Rosh Hashanah became uh, New Year's Day for Israel. Uh, in reality, though, it did begin back right in the, around the first century in the modern era when rabbis began to alter this. And it's not to say that they're doing this without a scriptural significance behind it. Uh, you might take into account Exodus chapter 34 here, verse 22, And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, even of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. I think in the King James it says at the end of the year. Turn of the year is actually more appropriate. It's not so much at the end of the year. It is literally in a cycle. And But in reality, what does this really mean here? It's the end of the year or the turn of the cycle there for the harvest. Uh, because clearly in all of our writings that we have, including that of Leviticus here, we have that it's to be in the seventh month, as we can see here. And you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim a liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof, and it shall be a jubilee unto you. Let me just see if I got the seventh month in here before we go on to that there. I know it's in Exodus 23. It's speaking about the Yom Kippur being in the seventh month. Uh, Thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and there shall be unto thee seven days, even se uh, seven Sabbaths of years, even forty and nine years. Then shalt thou make a proclamation with the blast of the horn on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make proclamation with the horn throughout all your land. So once again, even with it being a jubilee, it's not technically really the Rosh Hashanah. It is not the head of the new year. It is actually the seventh month. But it is the beginning of the harvest over again. And so that, you know, regardless of how the different rabbis came up with the idea of renaming this the new year for Israel, it's not technically our new year. But that's interesting in itself. And you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you and you shall return every man into his own possession and you shall return every man his, unto his family. A jubilee shall be the 50th year uh, be unto you and you shall not sow neither reap that which groweth of itself in, nor gather the grapes in it, or uh, in it of the undressed vines. And as I shared with you guys in this remarkable revelation the other day, that this has everything to do with the coming of the two witnesses. So there will come a 50th jubilee, or excuse me, a jubilee, not a 50th jubilee, but a jubilee year, which is every 50 years. There is going to come that jubilee year that will be what we would call the final jubilee. And I believe as a type and a shadow, it's always been that Israel does not plant that year, neither do they harvest. Why? Because we read in the Bible that Yeshua says he has planted. And of course, 
the angels will do the reaping and the angels are your witnesses they will begin to do the actual reaping going to look in isaiah 61 once again and as i was saying to people you know please don't get it confused i don't say that 2017 is a jubilee year you know could it be there's always that possibility that it could be but it might not be for another 30 years or more don't know for sure we don't none of us really know because israel stopped celebrating the jubilee years once the house of israel went into captivity that's when the cessation of this particular uh, feast was kept now we still keep the feast of, of tabernacles the, the the feast of trumpets that, that involves all these feasts here the first harvest etc yom kippur all these are kept by the jewish people to this day but there is coming a day when that last jubilee will come. Now, I think, too, that perhaps the reason why we have a cessation of this holiday and not truly knowing when the year of jubilee actually is, and that being even in light of uh, Samuel, uh, excuse me, uh, Judah ben Samuel, the rabbi from the, 12, uh, from the, the, what is that, the 12th or 13th century there, who had prophesied successfully, not so much prophecy, but he did a calculation that would show the Ottoman Empire would control the Jerusalem for 400 years, and as well showed that 1967 would be the year that the, uh, Jerusalem would be liberated by the Jewish people. Uh, now he claims that this is the Jubilee year on that date there, which would inevitably make 2017 a Jubilee year if his accurate, if his calculations are correct. Uh, as far as that being a jubilee year, all right? And again, I have no idea of knowing whether that is so or not. So, so many people that are expecting this coming Saturday to be a rapture or something of that nature, I can't stand and say that that would be the case. I have no idea, all right? But when we do have that jubilee, when that jubilee will begin, when the beginning of Jacob's trouble will truly start, you know, and if it's this year, so be it. But if not, if it's next year, the year after, or 10 years, 20 years from now, what will take place is the harvest will begin. And this is one reason why we see in Isaiah 61, beautiful scripture here, Yeshua reading this first part of the scripture, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening eyes of the, uh, to them that are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's good pleasure. All right, he closed the book. He said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled within your hearing. But it goes on to say, in the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all that mourn. All right, definitely on a Yom Kippur, this will take place. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them garland for ashes, the joy of joy, for mourning the mantle of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the terebinths of righteous, the what? The planting of the Lord. This is why you're not to plant during that jubilee year. It's why you're not to harvest in that jubilee year because he did the planting and he will be the one that does the harvest as well using his angels as it says here. And they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former what? Desolations. And they shall renew the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. Now, I do have to question when it speaks about raising up the former des desolations, is it speaking of the people, not so much the buildings? Because when we shared with you that scripture we did over in the book of Daniel not too long ago, when it speaks about, you know, that, he, that speaking of the Antichrist that would come, the one that will replace the Messiah, Yeshua, that he would be the abomination that makes desolations. It's a continuing, not a, not a stop uh, just one time, but an ongoing desolation, see? So he's the abomination. There is a Roman hierarchy that is put in power that would do nothing but try to stomp out the true Jewish believers. And they've been busy doing that for the last nearly 2,000 years. Even the Russian Jews, the Holocaust is never mentioned there where they are put to death by what? Jesuit leaders that are in place inside of uh, Russia. Stalin and, uh, and those guys there that were doing all of this murdering of the, of the uh, well, they were calling it the Russian Orthodox, but that is actually one of your tribes of Jews that were lost there. So 
The stranger shall stand and feed your flocks, and aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. And as I stated before, the Lord spoke to me and said to me to read this scripture here, Isaiah 61, like 25 years ago. Never said why, baffled me for the longest time in my life, never understood exactly why, but I read this and I heard the Lord say it audibly as I'm speaking to you. And when I got, I knew it was the redemption of Israel, but I didn't understand this part about the plowmen and your vine dressers. Uh, and now I know it has everything to do with that 50th Jubilee. The last, not the 50th, I always get that mixed up. The Jubilee year, uh, the last Jubilee, when that does come, the vine dressers will definitely be your two witnesses. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. Hope it's a blessing to you. So Rosh Hashanah, you could still say it's the first of the year because it's the first of the harvest. And, uh, but technically, it's still the seventh month of the Jewish year. But it will be definitely a beginning, a new beginning, because it will be the harvest, the great harvest that is coming. I'm Stephen Benin with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate your help in supporting the work that we do here. Visit our website, IsraelReturns.com. You can give online there or at IsraeliNewsLive.org. Shalom. Thank you.